Hey guys, what's up? Reese here from UFT Tech, uh, filling in for Brett today because we got something in recently that I was personally really, really excited to check out. So for a little bit of backstory here, Schenker actually contacted us a little while ago. Uh, they asked if anyone at the UFT Tech team was interested in audio engineering or music production or anything in that general realm because they were actually working on a product that they were hoping would be beneficial to those in the audio space. My friends, today's video is brought to you by Ewin in their Champion Series racing chair. This has been my go-to chair for the past couple of weeks ever since they sent it to me. We actually did an unboxing video over on our second channel, Brainus, which you can check out right up there. But suffice it to say, it has all of the features that you should be looking at for a chair in your home gaming setup. It's got the bucket style seating, has really, really comfy foam that's going on throughout the entire thing. They actually say it's double density compared to normal gaming chairs and it does feel like it's much better also it has fully adjustable armrest whether you want to do it up and down sideways or diagonal it can do everything for you that way and it has hubless casters to roll around on which makes gliding super smooth as well as looking pretty dang fancy it also has a really good incline in case you decide that you really want to throw yourself back and determine whether or not can you do this because yes, you can, you can indeed do that with, with the Ewin chairs. It has all of the features you would expect, like height adjust, back adjust, lumbar support, a little neck cushion to go along with it. But my favorite feature is that it's just dang comfortable compared to a lot of other chairs that I've sat in. This is by far at the top of my list of comfy chairs that you can check out. So if you use the link in the video description, you can save 20% off by using code UFD when picking up an eWin Champion Series chair. Go ahead and check them out. Again, code UFD for 20% off, my friends. Link is in the video description. So what they actually sent us was the XMG Fusion 15, which it's not a brand new laptop by any means. It actually launched sometime in Q3 2019, I think. Uh, it was actually built in collaboration with Intel and a couple of other brands to sort of make a hybrid gaming professional use laptop as a sort of concept piece. So aesthetics wise, this thing is very, very clean and modern looking. It's got that like sleek aesthetic to it. You know, they didn't go overly gamer with anything, which is not not a vibe I'm really into these days. I know a lot of manufacturers are kind of going for that, but it just doesn't work for me personally. Uh, I'm super impressed with this build quality wise. Damn, the full magnesium alloy frame that this thing has is just insanely light. I think it tops in at like 1.9 kgs or like just over four pounds in American for a laptop with these specs. I am kind of blown away by that. So I think the only plastic part of the entire frame of the laptop is these little covers here on the sides. So that's for the, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas. So that makes sense completely. It doesn't like detract from the quality or anything like that. So big win there. And thankfully as a MacBook guy too, there's a full array of ports on this thing. So I'm happy about that. So on this side, we have a USB A 3.1 gen two port. We've got a mic in a headphone out. I like that there's like dedicated mic in on the back here. We have the power in an ethernet port, an HDMI and a Thunderbolt 3 port, which I mean, great if you're doing audio work, but unfortunately it doesn't support power in. So if you wanted to do like a single cable setup, that's not gonna work with this. It just needs too much juice. On this side, we have two USB-A 3.1 Gen 1 ports, uh, along with an SD card reader, which I am super thankful for that. So the display actually has a really nice 15.6 inch IPS panel. I mean, it's 1080p, 144 Hertz, hits all the gaming things right there. But on the production side of things, it only hits 90% of sRGB color space coverage, which I kind of set a bare benchmark of like 95% at least as a minimum to be comfortable in doing any kind of color correction work or anything like that. This is obviously after color calibration has been done. It's also not the brightest panel. It sits somewhere between 260 nits to 300 nits brightness, depending on where you take a reading. So uh, not quite enough if you're trying to do any kind of work outdoors or in really 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 bright rooms so you know if you're just gaming on this thing like perfect perfect display now taking a look at the webcam quickly i'll show you what some of that looks like okay so checking out the quality of the built-in webcam and microphone array i have seen better quality video i'm just currently letting everything run on auto just to see how it manages things uh which will be your experience in most apps that you tried out in like zoom or skype or whatever but 
Uh, when it comes to the microphone array, I'm actually kind of impressed. It has a couple of different polar patterns that you can use using the different microphones to cancel out, say, background noise. But for the most part, I'm just running things in omnidirectional. So you can hear it still picks up your clickety clackities and all that as you're trying to use your computer. So just to give you a rough idea. Now, the keyboard is actually one of the really interesting things about this. Uh, it's not a chiclet style keyboard that you would typically expect to find on a laptop. So it doesn't have like the frame in between all the keys. Uh, it's just like a singular cutout in this entire space. So that's what causes the problems. Without the frame between the keys, the keys don't have quite as much stability as I would like. That's why when I'm typing really fast, I actually tend to make quite a few mistakes as the, the keys tend to wobble and I accidentally get uh, extra key presses in there by accident. So th that's taken quite a bit of getting used to. I mean, I'm sure it'll be fine eventually. I, I really have to say, I feel like the keys just could use with some kind of extra stabilizing. I don't know how you would get that right, but as far as actually using it in day-to-day -day life, I do find myself making a lot more mistakes when using this. It does have some really nice uh, optomechanical silent switches, so they feel really good. It's just, it's honestly just the stability between the key presses that kind of throws me off. Hitting other keys while I'm trying to type fast, that's, that's a bit of a downer. The trackpad, however, is fantastic. I mean, this is probably one of my favorite Windows trackpads I've ever tried in my life. It's a, a very nice glass surface. It's super precise. Anything I've tried to throw at it, I've like even edited drums on this thing using just the trackpad like a madman to torture myself. And just, wow. For someone who hates Windows trackpads with a freaking passion, this thing is just... <laughs> Delving inside, XMG only offer this thing with a 9th gen Intel i7-9750H. So that's a six core, 12 thread coffee leg chip with a base and boost clock of 2.6 gigahertz and 4.5 gigahertz respectively. This particular review unit features an RTX 2070 Max-Q with eight gigs of GDDR6, 16 gigs of DDR4 running at 2660 megahertz and a one terabyte Samsung Evo Plus drive all of which is actually very configurable. Now, probably the worst part about this entire freaking laptop are these damn awful downward firing speakers that just sound like absolute anus. Get, get yourself a pair of headphones or some good speakers or something. Just, no, no, just, I would prefer if these didn't even exist. If they just, if the laptop had nothing, that's, that's how bad they are. On a positive note, however, somehow they got a freaking massive 93 watt hour battery in this thing. I mean, that is close to the legal limit that you can actually take on flights. And I honestly don't know how they managed to get that thing in here. It's ridiculous. I love it. Uh, and it lasts for a genuinely long time if you manage your power profiles correctly. Thankfully, XMG have made that super easy to manage. There's a dedicated button to cycle between your power modes. You can go from silent to enthusiast to balanced. You know, depending on your use case. I find balanced is the best all-rounder because it still hits the boost clocks that you want and it doesn't have the incredibly aggressive fan curve of enthusiast mode. But for benchmarking purposes, I did set it to enthusiast mode at the detriment of my own sanity because that, that fan curve is so damn aggressive. Like, if you're playing games on enthusiast mode, you need some headphones or something to try and drown it out because it's, it's unbearable, to be honest. It's, it's really loud. So all games were benchmarked at 1080p ultra or their equivalent settings. If Hairworks or DLSS was available, I turned those on just to get a rough idea because that's personally what I would play at. I felt like it was a very balanced setup. So Cinebench R15 returned an average score of 1,247 when doing the multi-test. Horizon Zero Dawn gave me an average of 67 FPS. The Witcher 3 was 101 FPS average. Fortnite, 118 FPS and Valorant was 217 FPS. So overall, very impressed with the gaming performance. Thermals were okay, you know, nothing to write home about. The GPU seemed to cap out about 75 degrees before it started like throttling itself. It never throttled itself too hard that I could actually notice it while playing, but it was there. I was watching the clocks of that. I would only ever hit those temperatures when I was playing AAA games, you know, trying to actually crank up settings there. So take that for what you will, uh, your Among Us is not gonna do that. While my CPU temperatures are fine during all my testing, it does come with a factory undervolt of minus 50 millivolts. So uh, that's actually great to see. They do have an in-depth guide on their Reddit about undervolting. So if you wanna push it more than the factory undervolt, uh, they have ways and how you can do that safely. I didn't feel the need to actually try it. My temperatures seemed fine. So 
I was quite happy with that. So getting around to the audio stuff, XMG actually has a fairly active Reddit community where they post frequent product updates, uh, optimization guides, any future plans that they have for the XMG products and BIOS updates are like frequently dropped there. We were actually told to wait for the latest BIOS version before doing our testing because they were actually trying to do something there to reduce DPC latency by a significant margin. Now DPC or the deferred procedure call is the part of your Windows that handles your driver efficiency to put it simply. So when you're recording audio and listening to it back in real time, you're getting a little bit of latency and too much latency can actually throw off the performance of whoever you're trying to record, whether that's you or someone else. Uh, if you've ever heard someone talking with a speech jammer active, that's kind of the effect of having too much latency coming back at you and it, it really, really messes you up. Is your refrigerator running? But trying to reduce the latency by just throwing like brute force computing power at it can only get you so far. You know, if you, if you slap some rockets onto your delivery driver in an attempt to get your food faster, you can't exactly be certain of the condition that the food is gonna arrive in. And that it kind of works the same way for recording audio. That's kind of what happens to your audio. It starts to break down and glitch and you get pops and clicks, all kinds of anomalous errors like coming into your recording. So that, that's not what we want. Now XMG with this BIOS update has seemingly done the impossible. This is some like voodoo magic that I am super impressed with. After updating the BIOS and using a couple of tools like RTL utility and latency monitor, I've actually been able to confirm that there is a significant difference. Thankfully, all these fancy numbers have real world performance benefits that I was actually able to see consistently. Now when recording audio, you have to introduce a processing buffer to allow your CPU enough time to process the audio and get it back to you without things falling apart. I was able to lower my audio buffer settings to 16 samples at 44.1 kilohertz when recording a purely dry sample and bumping it up only to 64 samples when recording it with effects. This means I had a round trip latency between 4.6 and 5.6 milliseconds which is honestly staggering. I was aiming for 10 to 12 milliseconds as a good result. I was easily able to half that. Now the people I could see benefiting from this kind of optimization is like actual audio professionals who need a mobile system that they can take anywhere and still reliably record with. But on the other hand, this is actually incredibly useful for streamers too. If they wanna do any kind of interactive effects that require that real time response to. So I actually tried a bit of streaming with this just so I could play around with effects. And even with everything else going on while streaming, I was able to get the latency low enough that it wasn't perceivable when trying to record. Like overall, my audio experience with this thing has been flawless. I really, really can't say enough about this. I'm super impressed with the optimization that XMG has done with this thing. So just a quick roundup of my thoughts on this laptop. I absolutely love the way it looks. Bonus points for being dbrand compatible because that is something you don't really see on smaller third-party laptop manufacturers. So I'm super happy about that because I slap dbrand on everything. So again, a big thank you to Shanka for sending this to us. The XMG Fusion 15 has become my daily driver because it checks so many of the boxes right. For anyone looking for a solid production system that can actually game quite efficiently too. I mean, I use it for all my gaming, my streaming, my Photoshop work, my audio design. Everything has been done on this laptop in the last two months. So I am super, super happy with it. Now you can actually only find the XMG Fusion 15 in Europe as its regional variant, but you can also find it locally under the Electronics Mag 15 branding or Aftershock Vapor 15, which are the local regional variants in America and Singapore respectively. Now, depending on how you decide to kit things out, because it's so customizable, it'll run you anywhere between $1,400 to $2,100 which still puts it significantly under some of its competitors with the exact same specs. So you really are getting more bang for buck with these compared to some of the competitor brands. So yeah, that'll wrap up the video there. If you wanna know anything specific about it, drop a comment below and I'll be going through and just answering as specifically as I can. And again, big thanks to Ewin for sponsoring this video. Check them out at the link in the video description. Use coupon code UFD to save 20% off of an Ewin Champion Series chair. Absolutely love mine, and I think you're gonna love yours too. Uh, if you wanna find me elsewhere, you can find me on Twitch or Twitter. I'll drop links somewhere. But yeah, thanks for checking out this video. I hope you guys like it. I really, really love this thing, and I really wanted to show it off to you guys, so there is that. But yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, see you guys next time.